Hi everyone, my name's Dom, welcome to the channel. Today I've got another tag video for you, but in this one, instead of talking about stories, I'm going to be talking about the physical books themselves. So, before we get into it, do the usual YouTube stuff with the like and subscribe buttons down below, and now let's go and see what I've got to talk about in the book design tag. So the book design tag is not one that I've been tagged in. I just saw this video on someone else's profile uh, a few days ago and I thought it would be a good one to have a go at myself. I love the physical look of books. I read most of my books, to be honest, these days on the Kindle, but I still love to have physical copies of them and I go out and buy the ones I like just so I can display them um, and have them there on my shelf as a physical copy as well. This, uh, the original tag was done by uh, a lady called Holly Dunn, so I'll link the original video on her Holly Dunn Designs um, channel down below. Um, she is an actual book cover designer, so it's kind of really in her wheelhouse, um, and I guess that's the reason why she created this tag. But uh, there's nine questions in it, and I'm just going to dive straight in and start showing off some books. So question one is, what is a book that you have bought because of the cover, either primarily or just partially because of the cover? Now, this isn't really something that I tend to do, but when I was looking at this question, I thought there are a number of books that I've become interested in because of the cover. I'll look at the cover as obviously the first thing that you see, think that looks interesting, look into it a bit more, and then if I like the looks of it, I'll add it to my list and at some point pick up a copy. So that's what happened with this particular book. It was gifted to me after I put it on my wish list and it is The Wolf of Oranyaro by K.S. Veloso. Now, I just think this is quite a striking cover. I just like it. It's kind of simple, but it's well designed. And one of the things that I found after I bought this or after I received this rather, is this is one of a number of covers that is actually interactive. What I'll do is just in the space, I'll pop up a little video, but there's a number of books from, uh, it's a group called The Orbit 20. These are debut authors that joined Orbit in 2020. And their covers, when you look at them through Google Lens on your phone, there's a little interactiveness with them. So it's little animation, and I don't know if it's all of them, but some of them, if you turn them over, uh, you actually get a little video from the author, kind of an introduction to the book um, through doing the same, looking at it through Google Lens on the back cover as well. So as well as The Wolf of Oran Yaro, we've got titles like The Bone Shard Daughter, uh, Rage of Dragons, Last Smile in Sunder City, that you can do this with as well. So if you've got any of those titles or any of the other Orbit 20 titles, if you haven't done already, have a look on your phone through Google Lens and you might get a little surprise on there. Question two is kind of similar. It's what is a book that you want to buy that has a beautiful cover? So kind of going on the same format, um, although this one could be more just kind of coincidental that it's a book I want to buy that also has a beautiful cover. So I went through my wish list to see what's on there that does have a beautiful cover. And there's two on there that I've picked out. One is Dragon Mage by M.L. Spencer. Now, this one, when I see some of the questions to come in this tag, this book will actually work, if I had a physical copy, for a good two, three or four of those. So it's a really beautiful cover. I love dragons and it's got a dragon as one of the centerpieces of the cover. Um, but it's also got a really nice uh, kind of naked hard cover below that dust jacket as well. Um, and I think there's some really nice end pages and so forth in there. So a really nice all round book and hopefully a good story as well. The other one that I'm going to pick for this one is actually another of those Orbit books that's got the interactive cover. And that is We Ride the Storm by Devin Madsen. This is one which again, like The Wolf of Oran Yoro, it's, it's kind of simple in a way but I just really like the design and the colours uh, and the layout and everything on there. And I just think it looks a really good book. And uh, again, hopefully one that I'll be able to pick up at some point soon and enjoy the story contained within as well. So question three is, what is my favourite series 
design. So with that, I think I'm quite fortunate living in the UK because a lot of people think that the UK covers are some of the most beautiful covers. If, if there's a difference, for instance, between it's primarily the US and the UK covers. So we've got things like uh, Robin Hogg's books, Joe Abercrombie's books, which are a different design here to what I see in the US. And I much prefer them. I think they look beautiful as a collection when you've got them all together on a shelf. For the one that I'm going to choose for this answer, though, is my favourite series. And that is giving me a workout holding these, but it's the, in this instance, the hardcover versions of The Faithful and the Fallen by John Gwynn. I just love, obviously, the books themselves, but the design of them, I think they are really striking. And when they're all together on the shelf, they look absolutely gorgeous. I just love the different designs, the different weapons that these books show, and just having the version of that on the spine as well, I think really, really works well and makes a beautiful set when they're all together. Question four is the dust jacket. So this is either a book with a beautiful dust jacket or one with a bit of a surprise underneath the dust jacket. And for this one, I went through my bookshelves and I thought, I've got some really pretty books, but I don't have a lot of special editions and I don't have any that I think really stand head and shoulders above the others as being absolutely beautiful, which is a shame and I think that's something that I need to rectify. Now, the book that I've chosen is actually one of my wives, so it's a borrow, and it is Sabriel by Garth Nix. And you can probably see in the camera there as I've got a window behind the camera. This one is very, very glossy. It's actually a film transparent jacket on there. It's, uh, I won't take it off because it's actually taped down inside. But uh, I just think this is really quite unusual. I've not got another one like this. It's got a design on the, the actual cover and then it's got a design on this clear dust jacket as well. And yeah, I think it's really unusual. It's quite striking when you look at it on a shelf. And I've actually not seen another book like this. So I think that one is a good answer for me for the dust jacket. Plenty of books have got really nice naked hardcovers underneath the dust jacket. And I went through so many of the titles on my shelves to find them. And do you know what? They were primarily boring. It's just the the text of the uh, the title and the author name. So uh, there was not really a lot of choice I'd had in this one, but I think Sabriel by Garth Nix, I think uh, is unusual enough to work out quite well for me. So next up, question five is the naked hardback. So this is one that's actually without a dust jacket. So for this one, I've got very, very few naked hardbacks to start with, so limited in choice, but uh, this book was gifted to me back in 2004 and I've not read it. I was um, maybe a bit old for it at the time, but I'm looking forward to going through this book with my daughter when she's a little bit older. And it is Dragon Rider by Cornelia Funker. So I said before, I love dragons. I think the artwork on this is really nice anyway. And then it's got just that nice little foiling of the writing there to give you a nice little gold sheen on the author and title. Question six is carrying on the trend, but it's a beautiful paperback this time. And again, on my shelves, I've got plenty of pretty books, a lot of them hardbacks, but plenty of pretty paperbacks as well, but none that I felt really, really stood up head and shoulders above the rest. Now, the one that I've chosen though is High King's Tomb by Kristen Britton, part of the Green Rider series, which I think is uh, it's not one that really gets talked about. It's a bit underrated. I think it's a really good series that I need to get back into. I think this is book three in the series, possibly four, and that's as far as I've got. So there's seven or eight out now. Um, so I've got a bit of catching up to do. This one though, a bit unusual for the books that I've got on my shelves, um, but I, I like the artwork on it anyway, but just the color, the nice kind of pastel color. The rest of the series, if you can get them in the same design, which I do not have, unfortunately. But if you get them in the same design, they are all looking like this, but with different pastel colours. And I think it looks absolutely striking on the shelf. It's 
a beautiful ray of colour. Not, not quite rainbow because it's pastel colours and they're not in the right colours, but um, it's just a load of splashes of colour on there which looks absolutely beautiful. I struggled when I was looking for this, but I'm going to try and find a picture of uh, a collection of them on the shelves just to pop up in the corner here. But uh, I think they look really, really nice when they're all together on the shelf. Next up, question seven, and this is a beautiful non-fiction book. So a non-fiction book with a beautiful cover. I don't really have many non-fiction books, and actually most of the ones that we've got in the house belong to my wife. But she's a biomedical scientist, so a lot of them are definitely not beautiful covers. They're all medical textbooks and so forth. Some of the books that I do have, though, um, I really, really love fantasy art. Um, I've said before in this video, I love dragons and a lot of fantasy art involves dragons. But also when I've been doing writing over the years, I draw inspiration from fantasy art as well. So I've got a few art books um, and this one is The Art of Elmore. So Larry Elmore, who uh, is famous for many, many of his artworks, but uh, the Dragonlance series of books, for instance, where he's done cover designs for those. You can see on this one as well as another one being, uh, as well as it being another one with a dragon on the cover. You can see the spot varnishing on there where it's a matte book and then the dragon is just, uh, just varnished so it's got a nice glossy look and I think that really sets this one apart. It sort of makes the dragon really stand out. It's a beautiful bit of artwork anyway and obviously being uh, a book of art by one of the great masters inside it is also beautiful as well. Question nine is a book with beautiful end papers. So for this one I've chosen a special edition. Um, I'm not sure how different it is to, uh, to a regular edition actually but uh, this was a day one release uh, special edition of Going Postal by Terry Pratchett. So with this one it's all about the postal service. If you've not read Discworld um, the books, uh, a lot of them, certainly the most recent ones, they parody a certain thing. So you've got raising steam, making money and so forth for railways and for banks. This one is the Postal Service and nice and dull, as I said, that's how most of my hardbacks look. But when you open up, you've got a beautiful collection of stamps. Let's get me out of the way. On the front and in the back, it's just the same design in both. But I think that looks really, really cool. And also with this one, there was a little letter as well with some stamps on and a little postmark as if it's actually been posted using these Ankh-Morpork pork stamps. Then question nine is the spine. So this is one that looks just as beautiful with the spine as it does facing out. Now, all of my books on my bookshelves are just uh, because of space as much as anything, they are spine out rather than uh, face out. I don't have any of that face out at all. But uh, this book, another one that I've not read, but uh, it's been looking beautiful on my shelves for a number of years, is The Other Wind, part of the Earthsea series by Ursula Le Guin. Ursula K. Le Guin, but both of my copies of her books are missing the initial. And you can perhaps see on there, it's, uh, it looks quite nice anyway. It's a nice red book with a bit of uh, splash of colour in the middle there, but Especially at the top, you can see again, we've got some spot varnishing there to show off the world map. And on the spine, you can just about, I think, see it at the top there as well. But we've got the same thing, some of the islands and so forth. Now, going back to the previous question as well with the end pages. Being a reader of fantasy, I'm quite lucky with that because a lot of them do have a nice copy of the map and the hardbacks tend to have that in the end pages, so uh, that should be a nice easy question for people to answer when it comes to their turn on this one. So speaking of which, question 10 is to tag some friends, and I'm just going to go straight out there and tag all three of the admins from the Wizardly Duo Discord. If you haven't joined the Discord, I'm going to put a link in the description box below. It's a great place to hang out. There's loads of people in there who've got um, a lot of fantasy and sci-fi experience behind them so there's always some really good chat between the guys on there. So being tagged we've got Andrew's Wizardly Reads, Nico's Book Reviews and Walker Writes 7 and I can't wait to see what answers they're going to supply for these questions. 
because I've seen their bookshelves and I've seen various videos with books in the uh, in the background and I know that they've got, unlike me, some really beautiful special editions. Um, Walker especially loves his cover art and his cover design so uh, he's going to have, I'm sure, some really beautiful, colourful books to show us as well and I can't wait to see what they bring forth. So that's it for today bit different this one talking about the books themselves as opposed to the contents but I hope you found it enjoyable and I'm going to see you hopefully in another video soon. Bye bye.